Hey guys, this is Indy, and today we're on the PTR for patch 4.3, and we're going to be exploring the new dungeon, Hour of Twilight. The Hour of Twilight is actually a really cool instance. You're escorting Thrall the whole time through Dragonblight towards Wormrest Temple, where the final fight takes place. Now you're going to face three bosses inside this instance. The first one is going to occur along this gauntlet-type passageway. The trash mobs here don't pose too much of a challenge. Obviously, you want to watch where you stand, as with any instance, but here, if you stand somewhere, you can get frozen in place and otherwise annoy your healer. So this is pretty much the extent of the trash mobs. Thrall will follow you up the passageway. And another thing to note is to make sure that when he stops, if you need to speak to him, speak to him before your whole group runs off. Otherwise, you're going to be turning around and running back to get the NPC. So here we are approaching Arcurian, the first boss you will encounter in this zone. Now, he does a few things, nothing too overwhelmingly hard, though we are short 1 DPS because our warlock decided that it was important to, at this time, skill up jewel crafting on a PTR, and he got locked out of the encounter. So, derp, um, you're going to run into these kind of DPS anywhere, but on PTR you're kind of stuck with what you get. So moving along to what Arcurian does. He's going to have an ability called Icy Tomb. This one will only target Thrall. As you can see, it is um, going to make him encased in ice. The only way to get rid of this is to have DPS fire that down. And you certainly want to do this because that way he can continue to help your group. He's also going to cast Hand of Frost. This deals 45,000 to 55,000 frost damage. Chains of Frost is a dispellable debuff that will trap a random party member, or more than one, and it'll prevent them from moving. You certainly want to dispel this as a healer because otherwise they can be trapped in very bad spots where falling boulders start to take them down pretty quickly. The frozen servitors are his minions from above that are hurling down these boulders, and certainly you want to move when you see the ground effect underneath your feet. Otherwise, each icy boulder will deal between 19,000 and 21,000 frost damage. Now, obviously, it's not going to kill you, but certainly standing in it for too long a period of time is going to make your healer very angry. Um, the last thing to talk about is when he reaches 30%, here you'll see him cast Torrent of Frost. Now, at first I wasn't sure if this was a debuff that I needed to dispel, so I tried. However, it gets applied every second, so it's not even worth dispelling. You're just going to have to heal through it. And it will deal significant group-wide damage, so it's a good time to use cooldowns if you need to. And that's pretty much it for this boss. Now, here's the loot that we got here. And remember not to forget to talk to Thrall. So once you've done clearing all the trash mobs in the second zone, you're ready to meet the next boss, Asira Dawn Slayer. Now she's not really difficult by any means, but she's really good at one thing, annoying the shit out of your healers and casters. Um, she basically does two main abilities called Mark of Silence and Throne Knife. The other ability is very easily dealt with, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Mark of Silence is going to go out targeting enemy spellcasters, so this is casters only, and when you cast a spell with this debuff, it will prompt her to throw a knife. When she throws this knife, it's going to hurl a knife in the direction of the enemy spellcaster. It's going to inflict 10,000 physical damage, which isn't really a big deal by any means. However, if you are afflicted by the Mark of Silence, it's going to silence you for two seconds. This happens very periodically throughout the fight. So what I decided to do was play around with my positioning. I would cramp up inside melee to see if maybe she would mark me less, and I would also try to stand behind people to see if maybe I could be, um, I could avoid being hit by the knife. It did seem to work out pretty well in this run. I got silenced a lot less, so I'm not sure if that's part of the recommended strategy or not, as this is all such new content. Now, she's going to throw the choking smoke bombs down on the ground. These really don't do much damage. 5,000 nature damage every one second is pretty laughable. 
But what it does more importantly is obscure line of sight, so you never want to be standing in the smoke by any means. Now she'll also cast something called Blade Barrier. This happens at low health, and it's going to basically reduce incoming damage below 30,000 to 1. The only way to remove this effect is to hit her with a damaging attack or spell above this threshold. That's all there is to this boss fight. Stay tuned for the loot. After you've cleared down the path of Titans and witnessed a bit of RP between Thrall and Archbishop Benedictus, it then starts the final boss encounter. Oops, hang on guys, I have to turn around and try to life grip a warlock up into line of sight because he's being a derp again. So phase one of this encounter will last until Benedictus reaches 60% health. He's going to be casting a Righteous Shear. This is dispellable and should always be dispelled by your healer. Don't rely on Thrall to do this because it stacks and inflicts holy damage to all targets within 10 yards of the afflicted. He also has an ability called Wave of Virtue. It's when he summons a wave, and this will deal 97,500 to 102,500 holy damage to nearby enemies, knocking them back. There's really no point to the knockback because you're essentially one shot by this if you get hit, so just move out of the way. He'll also cast Purifying Light and Purifying Blast in Phase 1, dealing 78,000 to 82,000 holy damage. Now, in his shadow form, once he reaches 60% health, he'll start casting the shadow equivalents to the spells that you saw in Phase 1. Corrupting Twilight will occur when three shadow orbs form above his head. It'll hit three party members for between 78,000 to 82,000 shadow damage. This is pretty easy to still heal up as long as people don't stand, continue to stand in that AoE in the ground. Be sure to look out for the Wave of Twilight. Much like the Wave of Virtue, it covers a good portion of the platform, but moves slowly enough so that you can get safely out of the way. It will essentially one-shot you, so just don't be in the way of it. I guess the hunter wasn't listening to that one. Now he's also going to cast a Twilight Share, which is a dispellable debuff. Thrall can't really help you at this point, so it's important that your healer's dispelling. That's pretty much the fight, and stay tuned for the loot. The Hour of Twilight was a really fun instance, and it should be trivial and difficulty for anyone with current raid gear. Please remember that with any PTR video, the content and information can change before these things go live, so just keep that in mind. Well guys, it's been fun. Until next time, this is Indy with TGN. Thanks for watching.